Along the Euphrates and the north of a road that connects the capital city of Iraq to Karbala, there is a city called Jorfil Saka, a city known for its palm groves and big artificial lakes. Over the past 10 years, this city has been an unconquerable citadel for the most ruthless terrorist organizations in the world. With the fall of Saddam Hussein in 2003, this area turned into one of the main strongholds of Al-Qaeda and the Ba'ath Party. It was in this area that they orchestrated a series of terrorist operations in cities and areas in South Iraq, especially Baghdad and the road that connects Baghdad to Karbala. A series of terrorist operations, all under the cloak of Islam and Jihad. هل كان أحد يردهم عن ذلك؟ هل كان أحد يقاتلهم؟ هل كان أحد يمنعهم؟ لا بد نحن نحن المسلمين نحن الذين نريد أن نقيم شرع الله في هذه الأرض والله الذي لا إله إلا هو لا يقام شرع الله إلا بالسلاح إلا بالسلاح. In 2007, the U.S. Army launched an operation to retake Jorfa Saka. The army failed and lost a great number of its soldiers and equipment. In the end, this embarrassing defeat prompted the U.S. to change its policies towards the enemy. Since then, the area became the safe haven for Al-Qaeda and then ISIL terrorist groups. The area is a strategic point between Baghdad, Karbala and Fallujah that could have kept the flame of conflict alight in the region and the country for years to come. An area that later on became known as the Triangle of Death. Wednesday, October 22nd, 2014. Three days before the Ashura operation. The army headquarters is located on the bank of the Euphrates, a few kilometers away from the city of Jorfa Saka. The forces shuttle back and forth within this area. It's two days to the Iraqi New Year and the beginning of the month of Muharram. The forces are preparing themselves for the Friday operation. منطقة مع السقوط النظام العراقي من 2003 لحد الآن تعتبر من المناطق الساخنة يعني بها الإرهاب بها القاعدة تنظيم القاعدة والإرهابيين الموجودين بها لكن خلال هذه الفترة بعد فتوة المرجع الكبير السيد علي السيستان حفظه الله وتلبية النداء المرجعية الحمد لله والشكر كثير من المناطق تحررت وإن شاء الله خلال هذه الأيام عندنا عمليات إذا الله سبحانه وتعالى وفقنا وخلانا وإن شاء الله إحنا مسمين تسميم أنه ننهي داعش والقاعدة والإرهابيين من هذه المنطقة بصورة كاملة يعني لا ترجع على شارع أبو صادق is a high-ranking official in the Badr Corps. He tells us about the aims of the operation and the motivations behind it. For those who don't know him, he's like a person who knows nothing about war. But the fact is that he's an old veteran. His calm face 
and his forces say so. نحن جئنا اليوم من أجل تلبية أول الرجاء نداء المرجعية وثانيا للحفاظ على وطننا العزيز بلدنا العراق أرض المقد أرض الأنبياء والمقدسات. The majority of these forces are volunteers, office clerks, businessmen, workers, clerics, students, the poor and the rich. The young and the old are all members of this army. They have decided to do away with an enemy who aims to strike terror into the hearts of people through the most inhumane ways. من زوجتي بالنسبة إلى زينب من أمي بالنسبة إلى زينب سيد من أنا بالنسبة لعلي الأكبر عائلتي وأهلي كلهم في دافي سبيل أنا أعتقد مع الإمام الحسين وفي أرض الإمام الحسين شنو إحساسي إحساسي أني شاركت في يوم الطف يعني النداء سمعته وانتهى اشتركت في يوم الطف والله ما أتمنى كل كل مدة روح للإمام الحسين أقول أبو عبد الله شبي يعني أريد أصير من أصحابك أريد الشهادة والله أريد الشهادة لبيك يا حسين 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 Tuesday, October 23rd, 2014, a day before the Ashura operation. The forces get on pickups while they are happy and full of energy to leave their position towards the battlefield. The destination is one of the Iraqi army's bases near the front line. They've decided to do away with the enemy who tries to strike terror and doubt into the hearts of people. In the operation room, the commanders are explaining the plan and the mission. The battalions of ordinary people surround a region that begins from South Jorfal Sakur. Other battalions in the east of the region and on the other side of the Euphrates will block the road if the enemy turns to that side. Therefore, the enemy has no option but to go to the farthest corners in the north and pass over a bridge which connects the two sides of the Euphrates. The mission of the forces we've come along with is very difficult. They have to wait in ambush in this point known as Fazalia and prevent the enemy from fleeing to Fallujah. Outside the operation room, tents are being set up one by one. The lull here is just before the storm. Some are talking to each other, some are taking a rest, and some are sitting alone thinking about the past and the future. Friday morning, October 24th, 2014. The day of the Ashura operation. At the crack of dawn, the fighters are getting ready for the operation. Launching missiles is an indication that the operation has already begun. The fighters have woken up much earlier than the sun. Their eyes do not seem tired, though they have been wide open during the night. The fighters are prepared to get themselves to the north part of the battlefield, that is to Fazalia, and block the enemy's ways to escape. 
اليوم كيوم الطف كل واحد فيكم اليوم حبيب ومظاهر وعابس وجون عد ما تهجم للأمام الإمام الحسين خلفك أخو واحد هسه يعيف الإمام الحسين ويدير وجهه بالمعركة فنعاهد الإمام الحسين إن شاء الله وبهذا اليوم العظيم هو يوم الجمعة يوم مبارك إن شاء الله الإمام الحسين عليه السلام في صبيحة يوم عاشوراء صاح من ناصر ينصرني صيح كلكم لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين The conflict begins much sooner than the fighters thought. In the meantime, some enemy forces prevent the fighters from proceeding. The clash begins. The enemy snipers kill two of the fighters. A few more are injured. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 